Construction Investment Committee is being conducted electronically pursuant to Governor Bill Lee's Executive Order 16. I would ask for a motion that conducting the meeting electronically is necessary to protect public health, safety, and welfare in light of the coronavirus. And so moved, Mr. Chair. Motion from Commissioner Gooch to hear a second. Second, Commissioner Piercy. Any discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. I want to find out if, is Commissioner Allen online with us? Or Commissioner Dodd online with us? It's maybe one of those are. Okay, Commissioner Gooch? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. And the motion carries. All right, our first item on the agenda is the investment report. And Mr. Beatty, is he here? There he is. Thank you, sir. Well, kind of what we expect, we're down to 77 basis points is our, uh, is our return. But uh, I've been uh, in conversation with other financial institutions, and we're looking to what we might invest in the future. But that's still by far better than really the market's given us anywhere else. But we know, same same story. It'll be a little less the next time we get together. But everything is at least sound and solid, and not anything we haven't anticipated. Okay, you've heard the investment report. Any questions? Mr. Bay. Hearing none, I'd entertain the motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Johnson moves to accept the report. Second. Second. Commissioner Piercy. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Commissioner? Hearing none, call roll, please. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. You got a budget amendment? A budget amendment. amendment, yes, sir. We just uh, need to move some uh, money from our, uh, I believe, uh, technology equipment to technology services. It's to fund uh, a search tool that we use when we have return mail, bad addresses. Uh, used to we could kind of Google and do pretty well, but now all those charts. So this is a service that we've used over the last year that's been very effective that just helps us to locate uh, taxpayers, people that may have moved, and businesses, and those type of things. Uh, so it's been very effective for us. So it just uh, just continues to fund that service. And this is within his budget. Yes, sir, it's just from one fund to the other within within the budget. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Johnson, second. Commissioner Gooch. Any other questions? Hearing none, call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch. Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Thank Bay. you very much. Okay, I'd like to skip the agenda around for just a, a minute, if it's all right with the rest of the committee, and call on uh, Sonia to discuss the finance director evaluation. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and I'm sorry to my peers who are having to go after me <laughs> since we booted it a little bit different. Um, I appreciate you entertaining this. My mother's had surgery, and so I need to get back to her, if you don't mind. Um, at the request of uh, Commissioner P and the Budget Committee, it was requested that we do a performance evaluation on uh, Director Nis Lisa Nolan, the Finance Director. And a survey was sent out to all the commissioners and the mayor to complete a survey via SurveyMonkey uh, so that we could compile all the data on Ms. Nolan. <clears throat> and Commissioner P asked that I come and present those um, um, scores to you guys tonight. I sent the results out to all the commissioners when it was compiled, but this is just so that we can go over it. Um, the first uh, question, there were several questions in here, and the first question it was achieve, her overall score was a 
So overall, she's at a 96%. Of the criteria, one, two, three, four, five, six, six of the questions, she scored at 100% that everybody said that she was doing excellent, above average on all the things that she needed to do. Um, and, you know, assisting the county commissioners in the budget process and the financial management. That comes as no surprise that a good finance director would do that. So she's doing an excellent job with that. Um, providing clear information, her ability to use her hands. <laughs> Sorry. Um, she takes responsibility for the quality of her work and provides it to you in a timely manner. Focuses on improving the county's financial position and she prepares the report and tracks the annual budget so that you have up-to-date data whenever you ask. I don't, I don't think there's been very few times in my 13 years, if I can even remember one, where if you ask her something she didn't know immediately or didn't get it to you really quickly. So she's very prepared. Um, the other areas, um, the overall score, the average score, uh, was around 94% for the other four questions. And it was just, uh, she achieves results, she's independent, and um, if I'm remembering correctly, her t she and her team get the award every year. How many years have you gotten the audit award? Over 20. Over 20 years, she's, they've received the audit award every year for having a good audit. Um, and so that, that again comes as no surprise. Her willingness to adjust and change assignments and schedules and procedures in a timely manner. Whatever you guys ask her to do, the commissioners ask her to do, uh, she tries her best to accommodate. Um, has a positive, cooperative, and respectful approach when interacting with the county employees. And um, she achieves the results with little oversight from this body. Um, you give her feedback and ask for the things that you want, but generally she does it all as, um, as an independent, autonomous um, in pro providing those results. So her overall score was uh, 21 out of 22 points for the overall. Um, in addition to that, um, the body also asked that we do a satisfaction survey on the finance department as a whole, the department that she oversees. This survey was sent to all of the constitutional officers and the department heads, the directors and the department heads within the county, and also the, the the players in each of those departments that interact with finance on a regular basis, whether it be for accounts payables, receivables, payroll, interacting with budget, all of those things. So um, I believe in total there were 86 people surveyed um, for this. And <clears throat> the overall score, and I don't know if it did a survey. Hold on just a second. It didn't. These were more of like who, who they interact with, uh, trying to get a feel for what area that they interact with. 74% of the responses were from pay, people who dealt with payroll issues. 72% uh, were accounts payable, 44% accounts receivable, 67% budget, 48% um, inventory, 30% grant, and then the other was 13%. So those were various, maybe they did several things. They had general questions, fund balance, those type things. Um, the employees um, providing information clearly to those individuals who called into the department um, received a 96.97% that they were always able to answer. Um, Finance keeps me informed about the status of my request or questions. So if somebody called in and had a question and they couldn't answer it, were they following back up? And it says that 77% of the time they were always um, helpful and 20% was usually. Uh, how often do you interact with the finance department? This was 35% of the people said a great deal, like a great deal, and then there was a lot. So another 35%, so about 67% of the people interact with them on a very regular basis. <clears throat> the finance department is able to answer my question or directs me to the appropriate department to get my questions answered. So if maybe somebody reached out to them and it was not the correct department to get the information, did they refer them on so that they could get um, between strongly agree and agree, it was the 100%. So 71% said they strongly agree and the other 29 said they agree. Um, 
there were several things that they provided some feedback and I um, provided those to Miss Nolan about some things that they feel like that it would be helpful if finance could do the, for them to help assist them with their job. And some of those are just, some of the things are things we can do. Um, go into a totally paperless pro process, um, training with NextGen, those are some of the questions that came. And so Ms. Nolan's aware of this and is gonna work towards some solutions to try to have some training classes and the things that they can provide, they will. Just noticed, noticed that there were some things that they could do. The employees of finance are knowledgeable about their area. 91% uh, of the people said above average and nine per the other 9% said average. I am provided helpful and courteous service by employees in the department. 71 said strongly agree and the other 29 said agree. When you contact the staff with questions or problem solving concerns, the information you received is extremely helpful, 53%, 44% very helpful, and 3% somewhat helpful. How frequently do you interact with someone in finance? And then it just goes through the times whether it's every day, a few times a week, once a week, just to kind of give a gauge to let us know how frequently that is. It says, do you feel comfortable interacting with employees in the department? And 100% of the people said yes. Um, the majority of the, the respondents were full-time. And so the overall score, uh, two, was Okay, it says, is there anything finance can do to enhance or pro improve the service they provide um, for the departments? And 83% said no, but the 17% that said yes, we asked that they provide a, an information and, you know, paperless product process, provide an annual report, uh, provide yearly earmark balances. So there were several things, and those have been provided to Ms. Nolan as well, so that they could, she and her team could look at those things. So overall, the response was very positive, and as you can hear, that no one was really displeased with the what they were being pro provided by finance, and also from this body, um, she received a score of 96%. So I'd like to thank and congratulate Ms. Nolan and her team for a job well done. Is there any questions? Are there any questions? Not is. I just want to make a quick statement. I don't think this is a surprise to any of our budget committee members. Uh, Lisa's always been available, or one of her deputies, in case she had to be out, and does an excellent job. Anytime I've called her with a concern, she's quickly got back with me if she didn't always have it right there. And as you know, one of our tasks as budget committee members is to evaluate the finance director once per year. Since we had done this survey about what, two, almost two months ago now, I thought before it slipped our minds, we need to get this passes. But again, I want to congratulate Lisa and tell you how much we appreciate you. I have got a great team in the finance department. Best in the state. As I pointed out, you know, we're, we're not like Metro, what they pulled a 12 hour shift last night trying to get their budget worked out. And we're doing it in a lot smaller bites and a lot quicker. Anyway, that's due to her department and her help. But thank you, Ms. Stevens. Thank you again for changing the. Are there any other questions from the uh, committee members uh, for Ms. Nolan or comments? If not, thank you. I'll, I'll just say that means she gets an A. Yeah, yeah. On our classwork. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, next up is actually Miss Lisa on the fund condition report. We'll get back in line with our schedule. We'll start with the development tax report. In May, we received $264,750. That brings our total for the fiscal year to $5,537,250. Our cash at the end of May totaled $304,083,664, with $271,847,000 being operating funds, borrowed funds totaled $32,237,000. I want to pass on doing the revenue review since we 
evaluated all the revenues last night. Um, these numbers were how we closed at the end of May. All funds were in green. Um, at the end of May, our hotel motel tax, you know, still we're not seeing the impact of what had happened with COVID and, and the close down. But at the end of May, our hotel motel tax was had an increase of 2.36%. Sales tax countywide um, is at for the whole fiscal year is 4.67% higher than than um, last year. <laughs> I think I've already said this to y'all earlier, but countywide, that's all the municipalities and county too, in April, which was the March activity where we were closed half a month, our sales tax increased 3% compared um, the same month a year ago, just looking at that, those two months, I mean that, that time period. We won't get the activity that was April where we were closed until June 20th. Still early enough to, to report back to y'all on our meeting on June 23rd. So I'll get that to you on there. That's my report, sir. Uh, you've heard the report. And as most of you know, some of you people at home may be wondering why we're hearing the same thing over and over each month. That's one thing required for her in her job is to present the budget monthly to the commission. So that's why we're seeing this. And having said that, uh, if there are no more questions, I'll entertain a motion to, for her uh, report. Motion to approve. Mr. Piercy. Mr. Johnson seconds. Any questions? Hear none. Call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Piercy. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Allen. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Next up is the risk management uh, financial report. Mr. Elam. Good evening. Commissioners. On the 264 fund, you'll see the graphs as far as the revenue and expenditures. Uh, the calendar year and the fiscal year both uh, look good according to the graph. If you flip to the uh, tracker uh, for the calendar year, if you look under the month of May 2020, you'll see the revenue was $8,585,286 compared to expenses being $4,610,269. And you'll see a difference of that of $3,975,000. Uh, and, and you look below that, you'll see the employees at 6,246. What I will point out in this month is that I think if you look at our trend, especially if you go down into the physical year for the 11 months, uh, you'll see a larger difference there. And I think that's where the elective uh, Procedures that people had were not being done in the month of March, starting in March and April, and I think it, the claims are beginning to show up now. There's, so if we go over to the calendar year, the far right, the total, you'll see $41,062,223 in revenue. Expenditures is $29,773,028. And you see a difference of eleven million two hundred eighty-nine thousand one ninety-four. And then also keep in mind with that, July and August, the Board of Ed is on ten months. So when we get to July and August, you will not see premiums uh, because they've already been paid on a two-month uh, basis. Uh, then if you move down to the fiscal year, the totals with it, you will see seventy-two million nine hundred. 
$34,201 in revenue compared to expenses at $69 million. $56,629, and your revenue less expenses is $3,877,572. That's the 264 fund. In the 266 fund, uh, you can see for the month of May that our expenditures were down compared to this time last year. Uh, I will break that down. The workers' comp was $6,428.35 compared to OJI at $53,541.99, and that is a total of $59,970.34. And if you flip over to the tracker on the next page, you can see where, as I mentioned, for the month of May at $59,970.34 compared to last year at $76,967.05. And compared year total, far left where you see the boxes, uh, the year to date we're running about 17% less than what we were last year. And that's the conclusion of the 266 fund. And then the county attorney expenses, uh, you'll see for uh, the month of May, $26,079.10 compared to $16,997.64. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Okay, we've got any questions for Mr. Elam? Oh, we do approve. Motion to approve Commissioner Johnson. I hear a second. Second. Commissioner Piercy seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And then you've got some amendments, I think. No? No amendments. No. You got a no. I've got the um, property and casualty renewals. And uh, David Patterson's in the crowd, our representative from Assured Partners. Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind him come up and he'll uh, go over the coverages and the uh, premiums. Please. Okay. Welcome. So I've been working with Ed for, gosh, a couple, two or three months now um, on the renewal. Um, the property um, renewal is up significantly. Overall, the rate is up about 22.5%, and we've got about $120 million more in total insured value um, year over year. We've got two new schools and lots of new trucks and stuff like that. Um, that property premium is coming in at about 855 340 or, or 380 perhaps on the um, casualty side excuse me 380 on the casualty side um, that's coming in pretty flat up a little bit our exposures are up the population's up about 15 percent payrolls are up six or seven percent so the exposure basis on the casual side is higher overall the premiums 1 million oh oh one six three seven four which is about a 2.9 percent increase Coverages are all the same. Um, the cyber liability is pretty flat. That's actually included in the property premium that I mentioned. Um, the health department has dental professional liability. That premium for a million dollar policy is thirty six eighty four, and we've got a um, accident um, policy for the volunteer firefighters, which covers all the volunteers in the county both for uh, Rutherford Rescue and all four of the volunteer fire departments, and that premium is $39.42. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, David, been talking to Mr. Elam, he said that uh, we had a surprise on one of the school locations, which was actually in a flood zone. Can you identify for me what 
school location that's at. Yes, sir. So Las Casas Elementary, um, they've got that classified in a special flood zone A, which is, you know, a flood zone. Um, and I'm working with my flood department to try to determine whether that's accurate. And I think Ed is trying to get an elevation certificate from Doug. Um, we should be able to get that. I, I, I'm shocked that they had it classed as, a, as an A because I don't yeah, I was surprised too, which is why I inquired about it, because yeah. typically when you build a school, you think about those things. Well, yeah, you yeah. don't want to build a flood zone. And, well, you're put 18, I don't know. They 17, trying 18 to. million dollars someplace, you kind of want to make sure. So, yeah. I'm, Hold on, Commissioner Pierce. Commissioner Pierce, have you Did ever you seen a flood the out there? Did you say elementary school? Yes, sir. The newest elementary school? Uh, no, it was built in 91. Well, it's a lot newer than where they okay. used to be. <laughs> that's still, okay, that's still the newest. That's okay. the newest. <laughs> All right. That ground is above the creek grade by several feet. There's no way that school could flood. Well, that's, that's kind of what I thought too, which is why I started this whole yeah. inquiry. Yeah. yeah, I'll get to the bottom of it. There's it, no way it could be. Yeah, I've never seen any water that high anywhere close to, that, close to the creek. So can you get that done before the end of, end okay. of the month? Uh, yeah, I'll definitely have it done before July 1. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say our engineering department does a creek survey every year. Well, there should be an elevation that certificate. Yeah, we get an elevation when the engineers certificate. did that back in 91, it's somewhere. But that, that increased uh, our, our yeah, insurance. Flood, significantly. Going into flood, flood zone A. That's that, a lot of premium. Based on, the, on the, the value of the building, it really increased our premium, which caught us by surprise. And, and so I'm just in total disagreement with that. Average rate is about 5.4 cents, a nickel rate for, and you guys have got a billion five in total insured values. It's a lot of property. Um, so the flood rate for that $17 million school is probably in the neighborhood of 20 cents. Excuse me, move a little closer to the microphone. We're not picking you up. I'm sorry. So your, the average property rate is like a nickel, nickel and a half for the 1.5 billion. Um, but the flood portion of that rate for $17 million last gas of school is like 20 cents. So that's, that's a lot of premium for just that one peril of flood. So if we can get that fixed, it'll definitely save some money. Yo, well, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. Okay, is that the only question okay. I have? That's Thank true. you. This also includes a workers' compensation surety bond of five thousand. Is that right? And the broker and the broker fee of twenty two thousand five hundred. Yes, at twenty two five. The the five thousand dollar surety bond is because we still have workers' comp, so we have to have the bond. You now, once on one of our once our workers' comp claims go away, then the bond will go away too. But we've tried with the state to to get away with not having it, but they still require it. So. Quick question for you, uh, Ed. I know we're needing a motion to approve this tonight, but can we prove that contingent upon this uh, last Cassis survey being completed and maybe changing that price, or do we need to wait until we get more information on that? Well, David just brought it to my attention, us working through this again. I feel like Mr. Piercy, I feel like there's going to be a certificate of elevation. We didn't have time to dig into it, if this carried over from CCMSI or if, if somebody in, in uh, his underwriter picked it up. But what we're looking at is I, I think this can be resolved in a day or two. I'm hoping, you know, the school board's going to be able to give us that certificate of elevation saying that it's out of that and it'll go away. So basically so, by the commission meeting next Thursday, you think you'd have that available? I'm hoping to have it. I'm hoping to have it tomorrow, but I can't promise it. Okay. Well, you're but, asking. You're asking for a motion to carry cover this tonight. I just want yeah, to make sure. Yes. And if we vote this in, that we can change that after. I, I would love to change it. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Any questions from the committee? Okay. Hearing none. Oh, Commissioner Piercy. And can we not wait and vote on it next Thursday night? Just to be secure. We'll be voting on it with the commission Thursday night, so. I know. So could we not table it till Thursday night? 
I think what he's saying it is we'll be voting on it Thursday night and if we get this certificate what we'll be voting on will be the change to the number will be changed you know we've got to we need to approve this overall but uh, that number is subject to change but I, I understand what you're saying too you know I don't see the difference myself but if y'all want, want to go ahead and I'll ask finance director do we need to go ahead and get a motion tonight I would do the motion contingent upon additional information that will be presented at the commission related to the elementary school okay. at least it gets it moved out of here all right so the motion would be contingent upon getting this elevation letter and uh, a price reduction we hope so do i hear a motion one way or the other here so moved mr chairman mr stevens go ahead i was going to make a motion to afford these premium rates to the full commission next week subject to reviewing the uh, last cast of school issue uh Commissioner Johnson also made a motion to approve. Uh, one of y'all want to withdraw? That you said, with the contingency, you do. You'll, you'll second Commissioner Stevens' motion and yes. withdraw yours. Okay. Fine. Mr. Stevens, you want to repeat that? I made the motion that we uh, forward these premium rates to the full commission for consideration next week, subject to reviewing the last Cassis uh, Elementary School information. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Okay, thank you, Ed. Is it? Thank you. Hopefully we got that straightened out. Okay. All right, next up is uh, the Eagleville radio lease. And while we're looking at that, I missed number nine is also emergency management. So I want to go ahead and discuss both of those. That uh, has to do with some money we need for consoles. Anyway, uh, I don't know, Chris or Peter, whichever one looks like Chris is here. So come on up, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think Peter may be online here to talk about the lease. Peter, are you here? I guess not. I'm here. Peter. Uh, there he is. Go ahead, Peter, about the lease. Uh, so what, this is the follow-up from a presentation that we made to public safety about a opportunity to lease the city of Eagleville radios for the fire department and the police department and then pretty much what it's saying is they're going to pay us back a little over sixteen thousand dollars a year for 10 years which would we would recoup the total cost of the equipment plus a five percent increase and these are radios that will be going to the fire department their portables as well as the police department and the mobile they both would be using Okay, I'm on public safety, and I'll just mention this past unanimous at public safety. Mayor? The, um, the option was given to them, and they were, I think, a little bit confused, but with us going with the new Motorola contract and buying all new radios, we went from, from um, uh, to digital radios everything would be changing and they were still on analog and they would have not been able to communicate. Um, so it was either the choice given to the mayor was either you go directly to Motorola or we'll give you the option to piggyback on our contract. And that's what we did and, and the mayor came in and, and uh, signed off on it. They wanted to piggyback on our contract. Am I correct, Peter? Peter? Peter, Peter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Am I correct? Okay. I think I'm. Did it not unmove? Y yes, sir. So, yeah, we, we, we were going to give them the radios at, at the rate that we uh, yeah. purchased it through the project. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Okay, are there any other discussions on this? And Mr. Pierce. Mr. Chairman, this is Robert Stevens. I had a question for Mr. Clark. I heard him say something about, a, or maybe Mr. Rogers, I heard him say something about a 5% increase each year. Peter. So it's a 5% it's a over total, a total one time 5%. Is that in the contract somewhere? That's in the pricing. So it's the already built in. for the radio. It's already built into what's on the contract. Then. Yeah, yes, correct. Okay. Mr. Piercy. Has the amount of the maintenance contract been factored into this also for these radios? No, there was. So, so the maintenance, the maintenance only deals with the infrastructure and consoles. Each radio is purchased comes with a five year warranty. So there's no, the maintenance that we're paying yearly does not involve the portables and the mobiles on the county side nor the city side. See where you're coming from, Commissioner Piercy. One thing I will mention is these guys run mutual aid, so they're putting out fires outside of Eagleville and helping us on that end of the county. And, wow. and they're paying for their equipment, so. I'm all about them getting the radios. I just knew when we went into the contract with Motorola, it was several million dollars, and then the maintenance was another four point something million to back that up. But I, I thought it was for radios and everything. I didn't know it was, it did not cover the radios. It was sticker shock for me also. You know, they, they kept telling us at the end, when it was over, we'd have brand new equipment. Well, <laughs> be hard to get brand new equipment if the radios aren't covered. Right, so that deals with infrastructure only, not the individual user's equipment. Okay, you've heard the discussion. Are there any other questions from the committee? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve from Commissioner Piercy. Second. Johnson seconds. Any other questions from the committee? Hearing none, call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Chris, go ahead with the uh, number nine, which is the general fund budget transfer uh, having to do with your consoles. It, yes, sir. Um, so we have received direction on our EMS dispatch, uh, EMS and county fire dispatch, and we would like to um, move line 307, 355, 399, and 709 into line item 708 communication equipment to purchase um, 10 consulates for EMS and fire dispatch. This was also discussed in public safety the other night. Um, basically, this is results of us not having an agreement with the city of Murfreesboro. So we're having to do some upgrades in our dispatch center. Also, um, my apologies, this slipped up before we could get to public safety. We reached out to Commissioner Reed um, That's to touch base with all the commissioners. And far, far as I know, that was a, um, a majority vote. Uh, I don't know what the total of it was. He, that wasn't, Reed that wasn't a vote, though. Commissioner Reed. I said that wasn't a vote. <laughs> right. But <laughs> what Commissioner Reed did is he contacted each of the commissioners that are on public safety individually and asked them specifically. And, they, and that's why I said, you know, they were unanimous because all of us answered yes, we were in favor of this. So, but Mark is correct. There was not a vote. Not a uh, vote. He was asking for permission to go ahead and send this to us that, and that, bypass that, public safety. That, that's correct. <laughs> so that's. Not a vote. Correct. But and, tonight and, we, we get the chance yes, to sir. vote. Yes, sir. Oh, I need a motion. I thought we had one. Oh, Lisa. Motion oh, to listen. approve. Mr. Gooch. Sir. Johnson. Thank you.
Anybody know? Any other questions or discussions for Chris? Mr. Chairman. Let me add one more thing just to, to add to that mix. The, kind of one of the reasons that, that um, you know, we were, we were on that fast track to co-locate with the city. And we were able to find out, and, and Sheriff being our, our PSAP, uh, primary PSAP, there was, a, there was a letter that goes back prior to me. It was in, I believe, in 17, between the city of Murfreesboro, which is a primary PSAP also. And there was a, a software product. The sheriff sent me a copy of the letter. There's a software product that we are now engaged in moving forward on uh, because I told Mayor McFarland that I would purchase it for them. But for whatever reason, in 17, they chose not. It was $6,900, $6,700 each entity. If installed at the 911 center, it would automatically co we would be virtually co-located instead of having to move to the city for about $14,000. And so when the call comes in to 911, automatically both those PSAPs get the call at the same time. And there was no need. And, and of course, we were on the track to move everything from South Park over to the city. And when we found out that we could do it for doing virtual, we had to back up. And that's what's caused this price here that we're going to stay at South Park by the new consulates that will integrate with our new uh, Motorola system. And uh, so we'll be able to communicate. That was just a little additional information of where we're headed. And I think the sheriff's already working on it. Mr. Frost and, and the city are moving to uh, purchase that uh, software. And so it should eliminate any of those problems of pointing the finger at each other going, well, we, we didn't get the call. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Call roll, please. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you, sir. Okay, next up is a general fund budget transfer and amendment for the sheriff's office. Welcome, Sheriff. Got the announcer Preble. She'd like to be with us tonight, but she's a new grandmother as of this afternoon. So ah, she is <laughs> congratulations. Obviously, where she needs to be. Uh, I guess first up, uh, Lisa. I don't know who's going to present the. Uh, the first one that's up is the um, ninety thousand for additional for utilities. Okay. The first amendment we'd like to make would be in the jail budget, and we are asking to increase utility budget by ninety thousand uh, by taking twenty thousand out of food supplies, sixty thousand out of building improvement, and ten thousand out of the other equipment. Uh, to make a total of ninety thousand to go into our utility budget, and that should uh, and that should that will take us through the end of June. And you want me to present the other? Go, go ahead with okay. the next one too. The I second one also be in a jail, and uh, this is for prisoner transport extraditions, and uh, we want to take ten thousand dollars out of jury witness, and uh, put ten thousand dollars into prisoner transport, and this also will take us through the end of June. One of the things that happened to us on that is the um, extraditions, long distance, they quit flying, and uh, it's all by uh, ground transport now. We have increased the distance that our deputies are going now trying to offset part of this, but some of them are just such a distance that uh, we're not physically able to do that. So you've heard the sheriff's request, are there any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I have a comment. I, Mr. Piercy. I can't let this go by. I sat on public safety for four years, and it was routinely money, more money being asked for food. And to see you stand there and want to take 60000 out 
knowing that you've got the money left over, that's just, a, to me, that's amazing. After watching the first four years, we just kept having to add more and more money to food just ever so often. So I want to commend you on that Thank for you, having sir. the money left that you can take out of it. Thank you. I'll make the motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. Second, Commissioner Gooch. Any other discussion? Hearing none, call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next is a special purpose fund budget amendment. And sure. Hey. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've got one other a DEA fund. Uh, this is an asset for forfeiture fund of $1,097.38 uh, that we would like to uh, appropriate and move into confidential 319. So this is something we re routinely see as they yes, accumulate it is. this. It is. So nothing new here. Do I hear any discussion or questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Johnson. Second. Second, Commissioner Stevens. Hearing no further discussion, call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Next up, Lynn, yeah, I, I see her there. It's a juvenile detention contract with the Board of Education for Educational Services. And here she comes, welcome. Good evening. Um, tonight I have uh, two MOUs and they are with the Board of Education. These are the same MOUs that you've seen before last year. The county attorney has reviewed both of them and approves all of the language and the terms. Um, the first one is for basic education that we provide to the young people detained and the second one is for uh, supplemental education services. And I can answer any questions that you may have. There are no Questions from the committee? Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion to approve, Mr. Chair. Mr. Gooch moves to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Johnson seconds the motion. Hearing no other discussion, call roll, please, Mark. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, next, uh, since we've already taken care of number nine, is the solid waste fund budget amendment. And I think there are three of those, Lisa, is that correct? Or um, it's nine? only one. Okay. One amendment, three, three functions. Oh, okay. I'm reading over my notes here and I can't read my own writing. That's the problem. Birthdays. Welcome, it's birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, the first budget amendment is uh, $9,000 to move into vehicle maintenance repair. We've got three garbage trucks that's had some issues. We need some money so we can try to repair those b before the budget year. The next one's contract with private agencies, which is a $15,000 increase, and that's for getting rid of electronics. In the month of April, the amount of televisions coming in was doubled the common amount. And Mr. Sandlin was asking me about it back there a while ago, and it's something I probably haven't explained to you all. We're charging 25 cents a pound for televisions and monitors. We are paying 33 cents a pound to get rid of them. We're not charging anything for fax machines, copy machines, and those type things, and we're paying 15 cents a pound to get rid of those, too. But that's, that's on the electronic side. And then the third one here is for judgments. I think that's a workman's comp claim, or OJI claim, I think is what that is. Property cash, I think. Property cash claims. Or we damaged something. Dump truck that crashed this year. You had a dump truck that you needed to pay for that you crashed this year. 
<laughs> more than 40,000 though. We already had some money left over oh, okay. from last year, so this is just okay. kind of to get your funds back in there. And Tuesday night we were going to go for a budget amendment to to work on Walter Hill, but I think we've already got some money in, in a line item for that, so we really don't need to, to do amendment there. Any questions? Would it be possible, you said we were at 25 cents and giving 33 cents and then we weren't charging anything for the other electronics we were taking, would it be possible for us to raise that to 33 cents and raise the electronics to whatever it's costing us where maybe we would get closer to not going as far in the hole? Would be yes, the answer to the question, it is possible. Is it something we don't want to do? Uh, it's Two, three years ago was when the contract pricing changed, and at that time we elected not to make a change. May need to have another election. <laughs> See what we think of the second okay. time. I make the motion to approve it. Okay, we've got a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Boots, second. Any other questions for Mr. Nolan? Hear none call roll, Mark. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mac. Okay, next up is a lease agreement with the state of Tennessee for environmental office space. Uh, and that's actually runs us about 650 a month, I think Lisa's told me. That's the office over across the street in the Goldstein's buildings that uh, we provide for the state for uh, the sewers. And they pay us six hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yep. So this lease is for next fiscal year. Questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Johnson moves. Second. Second. Commissioner Piercy. Any other questions? Hearing none. Call roll, please. Mr. Gooch. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner Pig? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next up is the 2021 Smyrna Rutherford County Airport Authority budget. I don't know who we have uh, to present it or is it Lisa? They, they typically send it to us and we present it to y'all for your review and approval. Yeah. It doesn't change, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I thought there was a reduction in both uh, income and uh, cost. Revenue, but they still sh they're still showing an uh, increase to net income of $456,650. Net increase of one sixty seven. They've got the principal payments down at the very bottom, so the, the net income would be one sixty seven. Okay. Mr. Chairman, this is Rhonda Allen. If there are no further questions, I'd like to make a motion to approve as presented. Okay. Ms. Allen makes a motion to approve the airport authority budget as presented. Do I hear Second. a second? Was that you, Commissioner Stevens? It was. Okay. Thank you, sir. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion or questions about this budget? Hearing none, call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. And motion carries. Okay. Next, we have some cleanup items for Lisa. And let's start with 13 unemployment budget amendments. The first, this uh, first one is, at the end of the year, we, you know, we're not sure where the unemplo unemployment claims were going to hit. We typically um, budget twenty thousand into a pooled amount. So, end of the year, with our estimates, we're trying, to, we're going to um, move nineteen thousand ninety-five dollars out of the pooled account to move into drug court, sheriff, jail, juvenile detention, uh, EMA, building, and building codes. Okay, as she mentioned, this is kind of a cleanup item we do toward the end of the year. As she gets closer, it looks like we're going to run over on one of our line items, which 
we, we don't do, and she makes that adjustment. So that's what we're talking about here. Any other questions from the committee? If not, we'll entertain a motion on that. Motion to approve. Johnson moves to for approval. Second. Gooch seconds. Hear no other discussion. Call roll, please. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Next is budget amendments to adjust salaries in multiple funds. And Lisa, again. Yes, and so at the end of the year, we're, we look at every salary account to make sure that there is no line that gets overspent. Um, so this is a cleanup at the end of the year. Um, we are, for the most part, there are funds available in other salary line items. So in Election Commission, we are requesting to move 11,000 from election workers into part-time risk management moving uh, $2,930 from clerical into supervisor. Property assessor is three fifty dollars from deputies to longevity. Uh, circuit, I mean, chancery court, $100 from deputies into longevity. Juvenile services, $5,000 from attendants to overtime. Disaster relief, $650 from supervisor director into the uh, uh, county official. Agriculture, 3000 from teachers into part-time. Soil conservation, $2,220 from assistant to other salaries. In fire protection, uh, we needed to increase salary supplements. This is money that they receive from the state for training. Um, $2,500 for educational assistance. Uh, I'd like to put 5000 into overtime, and then there are some related benefits. We're able to move 5000 out of other salary and wages, but the, we needed 10605 so we were, there's money available in the pooled insurance, employee insurance, so that's our recommendation to balance that budget. The second page um, is in the county mayor's requesting to move 3000 from assistance to overtime. Um, other general administration, that is the community learning, requesting to move $2,015 from part-time into supervisor, teachers, and pension costs. In the sheriff's department, um, this one is to clean up, again, to clean up lines and to provide additional overtime, um, requesting to move uh, $119,100 from dispatchers, 100 into overtime. Um, 8,900 to deputies, 9,000 to accountants, and 1,200 to data processing personnel. In the jail, we're requesting to move $1,111, uh, let me try that again, $111,500 from guards, 100 into overtime, 15 into maintenance personnel, 1,500, and then 10,000 into other salary and wages. Um, that concludes all the salary adjustments for the general fund. Um, I'll continue unless y'all want me to stop. Okay. In the solid waste fund, it is the review of um, health benefits. So we are asking to move 2,500 fr from employee insurance out of um, 55 to 754 into uh, convenience center 2500 uh, yeah 2510 and also to I said that wrong y'all sorry 2510 out of convenience centers going to other collection of 10,000 and then in I think that's 7754 I think that is um, landfill and that will clean that one up and then in EMA, looking at the activities that they had in May, um, this is more or less uh, just kind of a amendment for insurance, 
not insurance insurance, but just to make sure that there will be sufficient funds for their part-time and overtime in the transport portion, taking money, uh, the same monies are away from their regular emergency, 20,000 out of paraprofessionals, um, and the related benefits with 15,000 going to part-time and 5,000 to overtime and the related benefits. Lisa, has that got them all? Did I? That is all of them. I'll clean up. We see these for different reasons. Uh, some of, sometimes we'll have a transfer from one department or to a different pay grade, and you, the longevity will come in. So there's lots of different reasons to, for seeing these. Basically, uh, we may see another round of this before the end of the month. And we'll check again after the next payroll. But, you know, when we budget salaries, we budget where they are around April or May, all the people who are in positions, and people do change. Um, some people, it's, it's, they go from one department to another. You've got situations where um, the person who left, you have it both ways. The person who leaves, may have more experience than the one that comes back, there's, then there's a budget savings, but we've got to take care of it when it's the opposite way, when somebody comes in with more experience than the one that left. And so that's, you know, sometimes it cleans itself up during the fiscal year. We check this time in all the accounts to make sure that no line, no salary line will be overdrawn by the end of the fiscal year, which is the purpose of these amendments. Okay, are there any questions on any of these line items for the finance director? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. Johnson makes a motion. Second. Piercy seconds the motion. Any other discussion? Hearing none, call roll, Mark. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Allen? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Let's see. Our next meeting is public, public hearing, hearing, which is the 16th at 7 p.m. Sixteenth, right. yes, sir. That's a Tuesday after the full commission meets next Thursday. Is there any other business coming for our committee tonight? Here, no, we're adjourned. Thank you, guys. <laughs>